और जिन चाहे सोम से जुबे एक्शन दिस इज़ द मोस्ट टेरिफाइंग थिंग्स इन आर यूनिवर्स बट चाहो गुड इनफ ये सब द गुड इनफ वीडियो अब हेल्ड इज़ गोना मेक इवन दिस टेरिफाइंग आई सो द थंबनेल लाइक व्हाट द फक दिस इज़ स्पेस वीडियो सो ऑब्वियसली हम लाइक ये गुड इनफ एंड स्पेस इज़ द क्लोजेस्ट थिंग टू सैमोनेला स्लैश स्पेस कैटेगरी देर कैन बी सो इज़ गोना बी फन लेट्स वो इस वन Remember to like my channel, follow, subscribe, so that way I know we start videos right tomorrow. Other videos like this is like you know like animated, uh, information and creative style, especially in this case horrifying animations. Good enough, basically saw how, how Samuel sometimes very rarely creates some horrifying images, and I just want to do that. And somehow it works. Somehow it's just like it hits the right, just the right spot, right? If he did, did that like whole video, it wouldn't be much of anything. But he knows when to use those imagery. So let's watch one. Let's start with the scary and slowly work our way towards the most terrifying ones on the list. Number 10, Space Junk. As it turns out, our planet is not the only thing we treat like a giant trash can, since space is slowly becoming a giant landfill as well. There are currently millions of pieces of man-made junk in Earth's orbit, with over 30,000 of them being over 10 centimeters long, or around 4 inches. Now, the reason why this is so scary is that the number of junk is only growing. But this really shouldn't worry you since I'm sure we'll eventually get around to cleaning it, which usually only happens when it becomes a big enough problem that our government is forced to do something about it. You see, the growing amounts of space junk are becoming a major problem for space exploration and travel, and NASA has already had a course correct 32 times since 1999 to avoid satellites and space debris. Now, you're probably thinking, this is an issue that you will never have to worry about since you never leave the house, let alone plan on traveling to space. But as it turns out, the space debris might just come to you. There have been many reports of large pieces of metal. Yeah, you, first of all, everything you do relies on something in space, like satellites. So you will have to worry about it if your satellites come under threat. GPS and many things might not work. So yes, your everyday life will be affected, right? Uh, second thing is like, uh, first of all, debris, right? So Leo, which is low Earth orbit, right? Mio and Geo, right? I'm guessing most of the debris is in Mio and Leo, not mostly Mio, right? Uh, not in Geo. So when when he says like, uh, you know, what is space, right? Like when you see the diameter of Earth, like how big it is, compared to like how thin layer of atmosphere on top of it is compared to that, and where the space starts, space that we call it, it's not much of space. It's like still crap, but crap that is floating on Earth. Right? It's still crap on Earth. Even that d debris in space is like on Earth. Let's be honest. So it is uh, coming to a point which is like astonishing to me. Consider the diameter of Earth, like I said. Now consider the cir circumference of that space, uh, whatever Leo or Mio's, right? Which is going to be larger than the circum circumference of the Earth. That's how it works, right? And somehow we cluttered that shit at a point that we have to worry about it. Right at a point like we have to like there will be a time where we have to worry about can we send more satellites or not, and cleaning it I don't have much hope right now at this moment, but yeah technology exists I guess kinda on theory at least and something like SpaceX is like a hope there because the way SpaceX is like getting better and better, uh, before SpaceX and before reusable rockets uh. Access to space was a big thing. Like, if you want to do anything in space, it's a big deal. Like, launch a rocket. Your rocket is done. One one use thing, right? It requires a lot of money and like send a lot of satellites at once because we are not doing this again anytime soon type of shit. Like, it was a big deal, right? But because of reusable rocket, it's becoming more like a uh, you know it's it's close to commercial use. There will be a time where it uh, space will be commercially used. Like, it's just like some companies just do that. Because of reusable rocket, because of SpaceX and things, right? So because of that, we might, uh, you know, like develop a tech that slowly collects this debris and like throw it in like Pacific Ocean or some shit, right? And we have to like, uh, you know, be very very careful about that because a lot of those junk is like traveling insanely high speed, basically in physics term, uh, high speed collision speed, which basically if it hits something, it will basically explode. So it's uh, you know we have to be very careful how we're gonna collect with a uh, some kind of a net and shit. But yeah, all spaceships and satellites landing on people's property and homes. But I'm sure the majority of the pieces go unreported since they most likely land in the ocean, where they blend in with the rest of the trash. Number nine. Seriously, there is an angle of Pacific Ocean, just the right angle. When you see it, you won't see any land. That's how big Pacific is. 
and most of the shit basically drops there. Cosmic voids. As we leave Earth's orbit and begin to look further out into the universe, we quickly begin to discover all sorts of terrifying things. But before we get to those, I want to focus on nothing. I literally mean nothing. You see, That's there steady. are vast spaces in the universe that don't contain anything at all. No planets, no stars, no moons, no McDonald's, no asteroids, nothing. These empty spaces are... To put into perspective, these lights are not real representation of like an actual physical star. Because that would be much smaller. That's how big gaps between these are. Imagine if this like, what is our closest star, Proxima B, which is like four light years away. Which is a massive distance. This is probably something similar to that. And considering that, considering how much diameter of the sun usually is, like your average sequential star. It's an insanely long distance. Like mostly it's nothing out there. That's why people usually don't worry about are we going to hit something when we throw something? Like uh, is a Voyager going to hit something? Chances are insanely low because most things are empty. At all. No planets. No stars. No moons. No McDonald's. No asteroids. Nothing. These empty spaces are known as cosmic voids, and in some cases, they can oh, be hundreds of voids. millions of light years in diameter. This would create a long and lonely space trip for anything that decides to journey across them. Unless, of course, you were blessed with being an introvert, since we are completely immune to this weakness. Now, I know these. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Introverts are antisocial, but does not mean they don't like uh, the environment they're in. If you throw an introvert into like point blank space, they would panic still just like any human, any creature would. I'm, I think he's talking about voids like Boethys voids and things like that, right? Which is like insanely big spaces of voids, or at least that's how it looks right now. So if you throw even an introvert, then it's like, what the fuck? Large numbers are very hard to grasp, so let me just show you what this all looks like. Here's an illustration of the Virgo supercluster, which contains around 100,000 galaxies, including our home, the Milky Way. Now let's zoom out and take a look at the areas here. These are cosmic voids. This particular one here is called Boötes void Bo and is one of the largest voids in the known universe, spanning around 330 million light years wide. For perspective, the entire Milky Way galaxy, which is home to at least 100 billion planets, is 100,000 light years wide. Number 8, dead galaxies. Dead ga Yeah, when it comes to voids right when you see of this like uh, super clusters and things and when you see the uh what is it called projections of how it looks when you it zooms out it looks like strands right like strands of galaxies connected to each other with the uh, gaps between that makes me think like maybe there is something between them maybe we have a like a literal like something uh, getting in the way so we can't see behind it and it's looking like a void even though there's probably no void there so it might be literally our like uh, uh, not having access to s see what that is coming the way type of way, right? I don't know how else to say that. Like uh, maybe there is something there, but we can't see it. That's why it looks like void because that strand type thing that you see, you know, you see the observable universe. When you see zoomed out, every uh, collection of galaxies will look like strands and things. Like it's connected to some kind of a, like a strand or like a, something like that. And there are gaps in between. That makes me think that's literally like something is in the way. We can see it. Or maybe it is a void. Maybe that's how all galaxies form, who knows, right? Maybe that's how like at the larger scale, that's how gravity emerges, right? Gravity, gravity's properties is like that. Because uh, some, uh, you know, physicists even like argue that, gra you know, gravity also has a pushing element at the larger scale, uh, not just pulling element. So it could be that could explain dark energy and shit. So it could be something like that. But I feel like there, there is something that we, we have like, we can't see it type of way. It's like how we try to see the center of our own galaxy and like sometimes becomes hard because shit is in the way. So there's literal dark areas that we can't see because we physically can't see type of way. Galaxies are galaxies that have run out of cold hydrogen gas, which is necessary to fuel stars and create new ones. These dead galaxies will be the first to become completely dark and lifeless, leaving behind a cold and lonely cemetery. But for now, these galaxies appear red as they burn through their last remaining energy that they will ever have. 
Now let's get to the terrifying Screaming part. In the distance. All galaxies, including our own, will eventually run out of energy. And it's hypothesized that the entire universe eventually will as well. A Way stage that is time. referred to as the Dark Era, and it's speculated to be the final state of the universe, leaving behind a cold and dark universe where light and energy see. It won't be like this. There won't be like strands of grass and shit. There won't be bones laying around. It would be so long before Earth won't be even a thing, even if it's like just to be basic rock by then to exist. Number 7. Planets NASA estimates that there are at least 100 billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone, and over 6 sextillion planets in the observable universe. That's 21 zeros, by the way. Not that it even matters, since none of us could even- Yes, sextillion, right? Million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion, and sextillion. That's an insane number come close to comprehending that. So instead, people try to visualize this by saying that there are more planets in the known universe than grains of sand on Earth. And for those of you that have never been to the beach, take it from someone who has. We still can't comprehend this number either. Now, we don't have to look far to find some truly terrifying planets. Yeah, see, again, people are like, how do you know how many grain of sand that is? That's how statistics work, right? You think of a basic, uh, you know, like average beach area, you, you take a like a let's say square meter of sand like how much sand grain grain of sand there is you take bas basically these figures and like you come with an average number that's what they mean so it's like somewhere around six trillion even if it's off by a few trillions it's not gonna matter because you're talking about the six trillion number right uh so yeah that, that is an insane number beyond few thousand you can't, like thousands we can imagine because US and everywhere, like big, I mean, even in India, right? Uh, with the, what is it, Narendra Modi Stadium, largest in the world type of shit, right? So when people fill the stadium, you can see few thousand, few, even a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, great, you can kind of see that. But millions, when you think of millions of people, like you can't really visualize that, like, oh, that's like a way too big number. Now go to billions, like, are you kidding me? 8 billion people, how the fuck are you gonna visualize that? You can't. Billion, trillion, quadrillion, yeah, you just, you just went blank by then. Since we have a few of them here in our own solar system, but let's just take a look at the scariest one. Jupiter. This planet is an absolute nightmare, and is scary enough to just look at. Jupiter is a giant gas planet that is 1,300 times larger than Earth and is covered in violent storms, as I'm sure you already know. But really quickly, here are just a few of the ways Jupiter would absolutely mop the floor with you. Radiation exposure, dead. Atmospheric pressure, dead. 400 plus mile per hour winds, dead. Struck by lightning, dead. You overheat, dead. You freeze, dead. You decide to breathe, dead. But if Jupiter is not scary enough, our galaxy has many- if you were thrown into Jupiter and if you have like a suit on, space suit, you would survive radiation up to a point, you won't instantly die even though you won't be com comfortable basically. You would descend into the clouds and you won't die yet, you still have oxygen. The pressure point would be so deep inside that you'd be really deep inside. Maybe like you said, lightning would struck you or some shit like... I'm pretty sure I would just die of shock by then before all that, but I don't know. There would be a point where pressure becomes too much, right? You get crossed and come to a point where like, uh, you know, like uh, buoyancy, thickness, how you say it, basically becomes such dense that your body just floats there. It doesn't go any below that because gas is below is much denser than your body's density. Basically, you float there. I don't know, disintegrates over time, like, you know, like... Uh, wind speeds and everything basically disintegrates you over time type of way who knows tidal forces but yeah and if you go near a jupiter you'll have something like a radio uh transmitter whatever right like radio or some shit with you and you hear that radio sounds of the which just terrifying sounds jupiter sounds terrifying when you hear that not to mention it will have like all the storm and lightning sounds added to it so it won't be one frequency or something is like variating thing. I'm pretty sure I've watched a video about like terrifying sounds of planets long before it might be on my channel react to it. It's just terrifying shit. Many other horrific planets to choose from, like planets that constantly rain molten iron or molten glass, planets that are entirely covered in ice, or planets rock. that are entirely covered in lava, planets rain that are rocks. entirely covered in water, planets that are just completely dark, planets with giant hurricanes the size of Earth. Nope, that's just Jupiter again. Jupiter. I told you that place sucks. Number six. six. Yeah, there are also, what the fuck? 
There are places where like shards of glass, veins at like insanely high speed sideways. So you'd be cut to pieces as soon as you go inside. You know, like nature is really terrifying and Jupiter is like the biggest of them all, right? Yeah, Jupiter just dwarfs everything else. Jupiter is the reason why Earth might be saved. It's like a guardian, basically, attracting a lot of shit there. Sometimes that shit also gets pulled towards the Earth. But yeah, it's like, mostly it's protection. Aliens. Ever since we were young, Hollywood has conditioned us to be scared of aliens, so it's no surprise that this one would end up on the list. Movies like Aliens, Signs, Predator, Cloverfield, The Thing, and of course The Goat, killer clowns from outer space, all made aliens incredibly violent and terrifying. And when Hollywood finally attempted to create a friendly and relatable alien, all they got right was his body type. And it definitely worked. Scientists say that it's only a matter of time until we find the existence of aliens. But here's the thing, right? An alien or an extraterrestrial being is simply just something that is living that didn't originate on Earth. So this could be something as small as bacteria, but if yeah, we're lucky, it could it be a fish or mammal-like creature. But of course, this could be something infinitely more terrifying. And that's what makes this one- Why do we, every time we imagine, uh, an alien, we imagine something like Earth, like with limbs, like two arms, like horns and shit. This is like our bias, right? The most accurate alien in any movie is like Blob, right? Because it has no shape and it turns red every time it basically eats something type of way, right? But yeah, it's like, we don't know how an alien would look. We don't know if it will have DNA life. If it is, like, it would be like interesting. How the fuck is that possible? Is DNA common everywhere? There is no life without it? Or is there like similar life than us just spread it that way? Many questions, right? And people are trying to like fish in like moons of like many other places like, you know, Ju Jupiter and things like that just to find some kind of bacterial life. It's so scary. So that's the plan one day, right? But I'm pretty sure NASA has a plan like that, but it's like a long distance type of thing. I don't know. We really don't know what's out there. Now, thankfully, we all know that first impressions are everything. So I'm hopeful that aliens will just take a quick look at Earth's orbit and decide not to visit, since we're obviously very what? dirty. <laughs> Number 5. Gamma Ray Bursts Gamma Ray Bursts are the most powerful explosions in the known universe, releasing more energy in a second than the sun would in a billion years. This can occur a few different ways, either when a star goes supernova, when two neutron stars collide and form a black hole, or when a black hole swallows a neutron star. These massive bursts of energy are a million trillion times brighter than the sun and could last anywhere from 10 milliseconds to several hours. Now here's what makes them so scary. The light produced can't be seen by the naked eye. So if Earth were to be hit by one of these powerful gamma ray bursts, we would never see it coming. And depending on how close the source of the gamma ray burst is, it would determine if life on Earth would survive. At a distance of 6,000 light years, it would cause mass extinction due to the deadly amounts of radiation. But if the gamma ray burst occurred further away but still managed to get a direct hit on us, it could still be catastrophic since it would heavily damage all of our satellites and technology, shutting down the Wi-Fi. Now... Uh, as, f as far as I know, uh, there is no nothing right now in our immediate vicinity that could hit us with gamma ray like that. So direct extinction is probably not going to happen. But distance things we can't really like locate and calculate like that. So there is a scenario where distance object gamma ray burst could hit Earth. Basically fuck up our like ozone there and everything that basically protects us from uh, interstellar and like interplanetary, every, every issue, like intergalactic, uh, all the, you know, radiation and shit. So even that would be catastrophic, like a lot of cancer rises and like a catastrophic level shit, if even that happens. But then again, it's like saying, what if an asteroid hits one city? Even that can happen. City killing asteroids, we can't track off. It can happen anytime. Has it ever happened all this time? No, because cities are rare. When you really think about all the ground and all the oceans, you, you cities are like this, like points in, in the entire planet. There are not that many compared to everything else. So just by statistic, what are the chances of a you know, asteroid hitting a city? So it has never happened yet. So just like that gamma rays hitting that, it's probably not going to happen. But thankfully, Earth is not really in danger of such an event, since our sun is far too small to produce this type of explosion. Instead, our sun will just grow so large that it slowly swallows the entire planet. 
Number 4. Colliding Maybe. Galaxies With billions of galaxies traveling through the universe, some are bound to bump into one another. As a matter of fact, our galaxy will be one of them. The Milky Way is scheduled to crash into our neighboring galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy. Oh yeah, that's not how it is. Like, it's, it's not like, oh, this traveling galaxy is gonna collide. It's like, uh, it's, how, it's how the properties, right? It's how the expansion and like a local uh, local group, which is basically a local group with Andromeda things. Uh, it's, it's, you know, the gravity is working in a way that it's like, you know, uh, closing it each other right and Andromeda is close enough to do that that happens to a lot of galaxies that's the property of things that's how it works apparently right people are like observing you know, how dark energy and things are working right there are th these local groups are created where that they basically gravitate with each other it's like bound each other together and some close one basically starts to merge with each other it takes a long time that's how local groups work so Andromeda is about to merge with like at 4 billion years from now or something by then sun will be fucked or something pretty sure like red giant and things so and it's not like collide it's like oh my god it's coming it's like it will blend with our galaxy and we probably won't even notice maybe something some turbulent but probably not because you know like uh, stars are really far away from each other and now the collection of the star which is galaxy coming close together it will it will it probably won't hit much of anything it will just merge together right and gravity of each other like basically push each other around and just like equalize like that so we won't notice as much and in one of the videos said i'm pretty sure there was like a physicist to basically describe that right that uh, if andromeda comes closer and closer right the average brightness won't be that brighter right so if it comes too close you'll be like very thin layer of blob that we won't be able to see even if andromeda is really close it won't look that striking until it really come close and merges and this happens like billions of years like it's really slow so yeah uh, four billions from now is it will kind of you know merge slowly it will merge it will go bounce back and forth and there you go one giant galaxy but that collision won't be for another four to five billion years hopefully long after humans have left earth and populated other planets but let's talk about what <laughs> that's something right that's, hopefully humans have left earth hopefully humans are alive four billion years from now that would be a feat if humans are alive, that would be a massive feat. It makes colliding galaxies so scary. As the two galaxies begin to get close to one another, their gravitational pull will bring them together. Now, surprisingly, planets crashing into one another would be extremely rare, since galaxies are mostly empty space. But what would happen is planets would be rearranged and shuffled around, knocking them away from their current solar systems and creating new ones. So any planet with life on it might be stuck with a new neighbor. Here are a few galaxies that are currently merging as we speak. Number 3. Supernovas Supernovas are the largest explosions that humans have ever seen. About that they can right outshine now. their entire galaxy for a few days or even months, and can be seen across the universe. A supernova That might happen very soon, right? Uh, or it might have already happened, like the light is probably- Yeah, the, I'm pretty sure it's like mostly in Southern Hemisphere. So it won't affect, I guess, like America's like Northern Hemisphere, right? So is India, so not yet. But Australia and things like they would have like an awesome visual at night. Nova can occur a couple of different ways. The first one is when a massive star runs out of nuclear fuel and collapses, causing it to go supernova. The second is when a white dwarf star gains enough mass by siphoning it from another nearby star, causing it to collapse and explode. But I think Eta Carina is like that, right? Which is like sucking in and yeah. Let's talk about what makes supernova so scary. When a star goes supernova, it obliterates everything in its path and is powerful enough to destroy all life on any planet within 30 to 50 light years. For perspective, our sun is only about 4.2 light hours away from our furthest planet, Neptune. Even though supernovas are one of the most deadly events in the known universe, easily obliterating every living thing in their way, at least they make great screensavers. Number 2. Black hole. We don't have to worry about uh, supernova screwing us up because again, like we can like measure, like with stars are the things we can measure, it's like big bright shit. So we can measure that and there is no star in our immediate vicinity that's about to go supernova anytime soon like a long long time like a million or some few million type of way i'm pretty sure that's the case so th there is no star we have to worry about which will basically go supernova and like our earth and solar system is fucked so we don't have to worry about that but yeah there are super uh, supernovas that will happen will be close enough they won't affect us but we'll be able to see it at night really bright probably outshining something like moon or something so you can whoa, what the fuck type of way i'm pretty sure that's gonna happen very soon 
holes. Black holes are easily one of the most terrifying things in the known universe. It's mostly due to the fact that we don't fully understand how they work. But here's what we do know. There are two different types. No, we understand how they work. We don't understand what they are, right? Inside of things like gravitational proportion, everything we get there, right? Black holes are scary just way how like uh potholes are like scary. What is what is that called? Like right in that ocean there's big uh, water cavitation becomes like even that's not fair, right? Because like water, all the water pulls into it. If you come to a road and there's sudden hole, that's how black hole would be. Black holes are gonna eat everything up unless you get close to black hole. Black hole is not gonna chase you right so black holes are scary but if you stay away it's just like yeah black hole but insides of black hole that's where like everything goes like, you know einstein in physics goes outside the window the first one is called a stellar mass black hole and is roughly three to a thousand times the mass of our sun these are created when a large star goes supernova and collapses in on itself creating a black hole the second type is a supermassive black hole and could be millions to billions of times the mass of our sun also we have no idea how these black holes are formed and when i say we i mean i couldn't find an answer using google got frustrated and just came to the conclusion that the answer simply doesn't exist. Supermassive uh, black holes, uh, the theory of like a giant stars in the early universe. The, at least that's what they think, because like when you don't have, don't have any answer and you have to think about all these things, it kind of makes sense when you really like measure how, uh, everything, how hot it was, how things would have formed, how close things are, right? Uh, and like uh, how st gravities and star would have formed. When you really, th uh, you know, try to calculate all that you come with a giant stars like enormous stars that would make sense these giant stars collapsing and making supermassive black hole because other, otherwise it doesn't make sense like how did supermassive black hole became that like what it ate up black holes over time some shit so it's probably giant enormous giant stars in the early universe but the most common theory I kept seeing is that a black hole must have swallowed another black hole, making it grow much larger. If there's anything I have learned while scripting this video, it's that astronomers and astrophysicists never give a simple answer to anything. So them resorting to the classic answer of, you eat, you grow, is quite comical. Yeah, but f space is basic. It's basic physics. It's like the f fundamental of everything, where everything starts and from there it becomes complicated. If you, if you expect some complicated answer to basic things, like, of course it's basic. Like, when you see, you know, like, trend of how everything goes in the physics, it will feel somewhat similar because it's the most fundamental things of everything. Then things become more complicated. There's opposite side of the quantum physics, quantum mechanics and shit, which is much crazier. Delve into that, you'll go crazy, right? So it's not like physics is just like, oh, by the way, this is simple. We don't want to think about it. That is how it is, right? That's the answer that they come up with. Since I know firsthand, that is not always the case. But with that out of the way, let's talk about what makes black holes so terrifying. Well, for starters, one of these supermassive black holes sits right at the center of our galaxy, gobbling up pieces of the Milky Way as we speak. Another reason why they're Kinda. so creepy is simply for the fact that they are completely invisible. As I'm sure you know, this is because black holes have a force of gravity so strong that nothing can escape it, not even light. So the only way we can see where they are in the universe is by seeing how they interact with their surroundings. Awesome, but right. the biggest reason why black holes are so high on the list is simply because we don't know what would happen if you were to enter one. Are they just wormholes? Or would you just get stretched out? It's not like we don't know. Again, physics, like center of black holes is where the like confusion starts, right? Spaghettification and all that, it's not like out of the window. That is what would happen, right? If you get close to the black hole, you start to get spaghettified, right? That's how it works, right? So, uh, you know, slowly, slowly, like, you know, you get like stretched really and like uh, get, you know, like at even points at the limbs, you get to basically detached and slowly everything starts to atomize and basically you become spaghettified. That's, that's the term, I guess. And yeah, I'm pretty sure you'd be dead much before that, but there you go. Like a giant piece of spaghetti. I'm not kidding, that's the most agreed upon theory. They call it spaghettification. Or could it be a portal to an alternate dimension? We really don't know. Either Why way- Why do you have to make everything creepy? Portal to whatever, that, that weird eye and like that. Why is this sketch always like striking? Hey, all of these are absolutely terrifying. Number one, the size of the universe. Hands down, <laughs> the most okay, terrifying yeah. thing about the universe is its size. Just allow me to present my case. Does this image scare you? What about now? Exactly. Let me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, ah. Uh...
There's some guy, I forgot his name because apparently my memory is not great right now. But right now it's like 13 billion, right? And it's like across few billion right there. And some guy basically like uh, really like calculated. Might not be precise, but it's like close enough to what you can think of. Like that's observable universe. And if this is how time began, Big Bang was the thing, and this is how it expands, and somebody really put the calculus in, I'm pretty sure it's like, uh, you know, like diameter is like in like, uh, what was it, like quintillion or sextillion type of like uh, light years across, not billions. Right now, like we have in billions observable universe, so observable universe is pretty small compared to the actual universe type of way, which is like... In billions, you already like observable universe alone is like what the fuck, right? Anything beyond that, it's like, does that even matter how big it is? Like you'll never process that, and like things are pulling away from each other, right? Pulling faster than speed of light, so you'll never even know if you tried. So it's basically the end point where you can never reach it. Let me show you a few more illustrations before I rest my case. For simplicity's sake, let's start at ground level. This is you. You're probably in your room. Your room is in your home. Your home is here on Earth. Earth's home is in our solar system, which has eight planets. Our solar system is part of the solar interstellar neighborhood, which is part of the Milky Way galaxy, also home to at least 100 billion other planets. The Milky Way galaxy is part of the local galactic group, which is home to three other galaxies. The three galaxies are all inside of the Virgo Supercluster, which has hundreds of galaxies and galaxy clusters. The Virgo Supercluster is part of the local superclusters. The local superclusters sit right at the center of the entire observable universe, which spans 93... It better be in the center of like, otherwise how is it observable universe? But yeah, if we weren't in center, then we know, like, okay, I guess, if, if however big the observable universe is, at least we know one edge. Because we are center of it, it's like, much larger picture is like out there. Because it's like, we are the center, we just, it's like being in center of the ocean. If I throw you in the center of the Pacific Ocean, you see like all side water, like, edge is probably not even close, because every side is a similar size, you are in the center of it. 3 billion light years wide, but it doesn't end there. This is just what we can see with the current technology we have. And we have no idea how much larger the universe is or if there's even... It's not about technology, it's about light. Like, it's like speed of light. How are you going to go faster than speed of light, right? I mean, it's, it doesn't matter what tech you come across, like laws of physics, physics are not going to change. ...an end to it. But of course, this doesn't stop us from speculating on its size or what could potentially be out there. Are there alien civilizations far more advanced than ours? Or alternate realities with infinite possibilities? Or maybe we're all just plugged into a computer? A simulation? After all, would this not be the best time in our known history to simulate? Yeah, the simulation thing, right? People say that and like we could be part of an infinite like simulation like Let's say there is a, like a real world, somebody created a simulation in that, which is like near perfect, like a real world, right? Now they create simulation, that's a real world, they create simulation, it's like a strand of basically infinite, not infinite, but strands of like simulation after simulation, we are part of one of the simulation. Now statistically, when you think about it, what are the chances that we are real world considering the chances of being in a simulation is much higher, right? And I don't know, like, did I thought of it? So I read it, so probably heard it somewhere. I'm pretty sure I'm not smart enough to think this. But somebody t basically said, like, okay, what are the chances that we're in the middle of this and not the basically like a real world or like the latest simulation? Okay, let's think about it. We can't know if we are the real world because we might be part of simulation. Great. But have we created a simulation? Is there a simulation that we know of, our world has created, that, that is a world of its own? Not yet. So basically that means we are either real world or the latest uh, simulation, but not in the middle of it. So now it becomes like 50-50, right? In a way it becomes 50-50. So that makes me like, okay, probably we are not, uh, you know, like a, a part of the simulation because statistic now becomes 50-50. We are either real world or the uh, latest one. We can't be in the middle, right? So that's better, considering like billions of simulation or one real world. That stat is, that, that basically terrifies me. Or maybe Earth is flat and just like birds, space is not real. So none of this really matters. 
I guess in the end, it turns out that the scariest thing about the universe is not really up in space, but instead lives here inside of our imaginations. It's the friends we made all along. Okay. Yeah. Obviously space video, of course, this uh, uh, 30 minute video went all the way to 35 minute reaction because of course I'm going to yap about it. Yeah, I love space, man. I can see why there are flat earthers. I'm not going to lie because the vastness of space, uh, all the different, first of all, we are literally speck of dust in our own solar system. If you go beyond Saturn, you can't even see earth. It's a speck of dust in your like, let's just say a picture. If, if this is like a TV and if you try to see pixel density, you're basically one pixel. Zoom out even more, right? From Proxima B, if you try to look at Earth, you probably can't even detect it, right? You might need very specific instrument to look for it. That makes me think like, okay, all the planets that we are finding right now, right? Goldilocks planets. We have some badass technology, right? Because th this is the shit we are talking about right now. Like how small are the planets and how to, it's like finding a needle in a haystack, literally. That's how big it is. Maybe even larger than that. So we are so small. And even then humans are insanely small with like one gray matter, right? And our, our knowledge and uh, how our brain works, accumulation of knowledge, right? How Newton said, I can see further because I'm standing in the shoulders of giant, implying like all the things I gathered from people came before me, I'm adding to that. And that's how science works, right? That's how we become the stronger in the first place because we are not starting from scratch. So all this shit is like why we are here in the first place, right? How we can do all these things. But yeah, this is the scale of it. We're not supposed to understand all that and we're trying, right? Scale of space, like how everything was, how quantum world works. When you really like explain this to anybody who's not like, uh, you know, like sci big science guy, of course he's going to be like, the fuck you on about? My head hurts. I don't want to think about it. Our earth is flat and there is nothing type of shit. Of course they're going to think that. Your brain is going to fight back when something becomes that, like, that hard to understand. So I understand all that shit because that's how large the space and uh, world of physics is, right? So yeah. All right, well, that was the most terrifying things in our universe, but it's not good enough. If you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.